Do you tell people what to do in their own lives? <laughs> not, not at all. Um, obviously, a lot of people come to ask me what they should do in their own lives. And usually I tell them to go home and work it out for themselves because it's their life. And I only have the right to determine what happens in my own life. So my feelings are if people understood my teachings about free will and on the internet, there are many videos now that I've placed connected to that question. And in fact, quite recently, we did uh, an entire talk. Uh, and in fact, I think it was two days of questions about free will. If people understood the points that we were making about free will, they would never come and ask me for advice about what to do in their own personal life. What they would do instead is that they would exercise their own free will in the manner that I've taught them to do and come to some kind of relationship with God so that they can discuss all of their questions with God and receive answers from God about and direction from God and also direction from their spirit friends and guides who are in a, in a developed place of love and get all, get all of that information and collect all of that information and then decide using their own will what they should do in their lives. This is what I do in my personal life and this is what I am trying to or attempting to teach other people what to do with their personal lives. I do not encourage anybody going to one person to find out the answer to everything all the time. What myself and Mary are attempting to do is attempting to share divine truth with others so that people have a process by which they can interact with God and gain answers for themselves in their own personal life. They need to learn how to use their own feelings, their own emotions, their own assessment, their own logic, their own intellect, putting together all of the information that they've collected to make choices and choices and decisions in their lives that are based around love and truth. That's what they need to learn to do. I need to learn to do that. And everyone on this planet, I feel, needs to learn to do that. But I do believe on this planet, there is a great deal of emotion about uncertainty. Most people have a lot of unanswered questions in their lives. And as a result, when they find somebody who they believe can answer most of their questions, they have a tendency to stop taking personal responsibility for their life and go to that person for the questions to be answered every time. Now, myself and Mary strongly resist doing this with people. The reason why is because we, if we engage this process of telling people what to do in their personal lives, and falling into this trap, I believe, of informing people what we notice about their personal lives all the time, then what happens is the people then become dependent upon us, which is the complete opposite thing of what we're trying to achieve. What we're trying to achieve is a group of people who are independent from others, completely reliant on their relationship with God for truth, and completely in harmony with love in the manner in which they um, share and act and live that truth in their personal lives. Now, to have people like that, we've got to wean them off of any dependency and have them to be strong individuals with their own lives and with their own desires being permanently engaged, but being engaged in harmony with love and truth and humility. This is what we really want to achieve. So, so any person that comes to us asking questions about their personal lives needs to bear in mind that, that while they're asking me a question about their personal life, they've yet to grow up. When they are grown up, they'll have a relationship with God and they'll be asking God these questions about their personal lives and they'll be trusting their own decisions and their own um, and also making their own mistakes with freedom and without fear. I feel what happens a lot of times on the planet is people are so afraid to make a mistake, they finish up making gurus to tell them what they should do because they're afraid to be personally responsible for their own lives. This is something that myself and Mary are completely against and we want it to instead encourage people 
to develop a personal responsibility for their own lives, to enjoy their own lives, even enjoy the process of making mistakes, because you learn a lot from making mistakes, and engage this process with God, where they become reliant on God and not reliant on anyone else. The problem with reliance on other people is that other people cannot provide you as much information as what God can provide you. So it's like, do you ask, so the real question is this, do you ask a person who is limited, such as Jesus, a question, or do you ask somebody who is unlimited, such as God, the question? My feelings are, I would ask God, that's what I do. <laughs> I don't ask Jesus anything. I ask God a lot of questions and get the answers from God, and that's what I'm trying to encourage everybody else to do as well. Of course, this does not mean that I do not offer guidance at all to any person. If a person comes up to me asking for guidance, I will teach them the principles of divine truth that I have learned to the best of my ability. The problem though is that while I'm speaking just words to them, all they're hearing is just words. Unless they have some kind of personal life experience with God, what I'm saying to them will barely make any sense to them anyway and will barely help them to make any choices or decisions in their lives until they engage this personal relationship with God. So I'm not against giving people advice. What I'm saying though is that every time a person comes to ask for advice, they're demonstrating that they would like to be reliant on me rather than reliant on God first. Now, I understand that sometimes they might have tried to get the answer sorted out with God and they haven't found the answer for some reason. And I suggest that the reason why is because there's a complete lack of humility in their personal life because when a person is truly humble they get the answers from God very very rapidly so if a person's not receiving the answers from God they may come to me and asking for an answer but part of me sort of goes well if you're not humble enough to receive the answer from God then I doubt whether you're going to be humble enough to receive the answer from me either <laughs> bearing in mind that I'm just a person and God's much more powerful than I am so so again, I would like to encourage people to focus their attention and time with this relationship with God because that will provide them all of the answers necessary. So the way in which I give advice is that I give advice based on a set of principles and I do not tell them what they should do. But if they ask me, do you feel this is loving? I would definitely say quite categorically when, when it is not loving and why it is not loving or what behavior would be loving in comparison to what behavior isn't loving. And this is why I teach a lot of principles based, through, on, based on illustrations, because I feel illustrations of practical day-to-day -day living give us a lot of illustrations of how we are unloving on one side and how we're loving on the other side. And so quite frequently, I will give people practical demonstrations through their own life of how they've been unloving and how they've been loving. But it is still up to them what to choose to do with their own particular life and what their own desires and with their own passions.